Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to another Monday. Goodness, it seems to come around quite uh, quickly here from the weekend. It is uh, July 8th, 2024, about 11.09 a.m. here, California time. Uh, latest activity on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a 1.0 into the region of Alaska. Also a two-pointer in the Mediterranean area there in the red flag. So we did see some earthquake activity here in our area of interest off the coast of the Vancouver Island ranges here. Uh, had a 5.2 earthquake coming in this morning. A couple hours or so ago, local time here, California time. Uh, 5.2, that was followed up by, uh, it looks like a little small microquake here, a little bit further south here around the uh, Juan de Fuca Ridge. There's a couple different fracture zones that sit up here. Here's the main ridge. Uh, and of course, the activity being observed out here is continuing to apply strain out here against the Cascadia subduction zone, uh, which um, it's it's been quite active here recently in terms of the uh, earthquake multitudes around this region. Over the last seven days, uh, this is just what the USGS here is reporting. I'm sure there's probably been a handful small of smaller quakes, but um, in fact, I really haven't seen anything below 4.0 except for today for that 1.9. But I'm assuming that there's got to be at least, you know, a handful of smaller quakes for every four or five that uh, pops off in this area. And coming up on about 19 earthquakes officially, uh, it does look like they uh, removed that one quake that was over here. Let me see. Has it been? I don't think it's been over seven days. No, it hasn't. So... Um, in the mix here, when we we're seeing this earthquake swarm last week, there was some other earthquake activity position right over here. Looks like they've centered uh, the majority of these quakes localized to this ridge area. So, um, you know, it's just one of those things. Could see some further large scale movement out here. It's not, uh, it seems like it goes away for a day or so and then it kicked back up here with an uh, increasing amount of earthquake activity similar to what we're seeing today with that five pointer so we'll keep an eye on that we'll watch for some further uh trimmer activity here across the northern end today uh, i'm sure we'll see it on the map once it updates uh, the trimmer map here from yesterday shows 291 epicenters of trimmer down mainly around the central section here of the cascadia down into the southern end uh, which ends there underneath northern california so trimmer tonight should uh, we should see some roughly around in this area here like we've seen last week. Let's pull up last week's activity. This movement right here kicked up as a result of the earthquake activity that we're seeing offshore here into the, the uh, ridge. So obviously that's a sign of uh, further strain and pressure out here against the Cascadia. And, you know, it's who knows? Who knows when we're going to see that big one? Don't have a magic crystal ball. But, uh, you know, it's been 324 years since the last full rupture out here. We could see a partial rupture up north or even a partial rupture down south. Hard to say, though. Just got to keep an eye on this and um, watch some uh, watch this earthquake activity, see if it leads to anything. 2.3 in the Bay Area of Northern California right now near Vallejo. Uh, coming off of the uh, Calavit. Well, looks like the northern edge here. Green Valley Fault Zone. There's so many fracture zones that extend here off of the plate boundary. Uh, and it's been, you know, there's quite a few faults out here across the Bay Area as well. That's well overdue uh, for some earthquake activity. But for now, a couple smaller quakes there in the region of San Francisco. Further down south, I uh, don't see any major movement here overnight. Uh, mainly some smaller quakes along the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Let's see here. I was watching this little swarm here south of the border yesterday. It doesn't look like we got, doesn't seem to be uh, any further earthquake activity after midnight here in this region. Let me bring up the 2.5 map and above. That uh, well, pretty much removes all the quakes there, except for some from yesterday. The last one at 2.5 here around the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Right further out and about here, Yellowstone National Park. Looks like there's a handful of smaller quakes up here in the very small microquake department. But I seen this last night. We're looking at this, and uh, there was a, a handful of earthquakes. There's the five pointer. I do see that fairly obvious right here. 
That's going to be that 5.2 that struck off the coast there in the Juan de Fuca Ridge, showing up uh, fairly nicely. Let me make sure I got the most recent data, which I do. Uh, aside from that, localized earthquake activity is fairly non-existent right now. Uh, maybe a handful of very small ones. Those are going to be the, uh, I believe those are the two that are showing up here on the USGS map um, up here in Yellowstone or right here. Potentially a 1.0 and a 0.7, but yeah, obviously nothing big going on there for now. And that's a good sign. Keep that super volcano quiet. Uh, Texas area, Oklahoma, looks about the same as yesterday. Really no major movement to report out here across the eastern portion of the country for now. No surface adjustment yet following yesterday's deep earthquakes here into the Izu Trench. I was really expecting to see something pop up here. Um, there is a 3.7 just around the Japan area that's been added to the globe. Fairly recent earthquake but uh, really no major movement upstream uh, following all that deep activity here yesterday. A little surprising. Uh, but we could still see it. It's been uh, not quite 24 hours yet since that earthquake activity struck here in the Izu Trench. A uh, trail of earthquakes leading from about Taiwan southward through the Philippines here. That's very typical there in the crunch zone. Fours, threes are the magic number out there, it appears. New Zealand seen a 3.1 early this morning, it looks like, or late overnight. Really, actually pretty quiet up here across the... Uh, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, and the Fiji area for now. Really nothing showing up on the Earthquake 3D globe. So a little bit of seismic gap going on here over the last couple days. That probably won't last long. I'm sure we'll see that fill in uh, soon. The Big Island of Hawaii. A couple smaller earthquakes out here. Doesn't look like we see uh, anything major going on here for now. Twos and ones. Uh, some smaller quake activity out there. Let's go check this out real quick just to see what's going on because we're at a breaking point, I feel, in terms of something going on. Eruption or uh, magma displacement somewhere. We're at an elevated level of inflation, the highest level observed since 2018. There across the uh, summit and upper east rift zone. Definitely taking a, a very sharp inflation event right now overnight looks like there was a little dip here but since then things are going up in terms of relative inflation there across the um, the summit area and the east rift zone let's check this out here real quick update was put out today it looks like uh, no, excuse me. Actually, it was put out yesterday here, so they haven't provided an update yet. I'm sure if something was going on, we would know about it. But overall, you know, we're getting to a point where things should start happening fairly rapidly. Let me bring up a seismograph station here, see what we got. Let me check out this one right here. Yeah, there's well, there's quite a few of these little fracture earthquakes here. This reminds me of rock breaking or some type of uh, It's just really sharp and spiky indicating very localized earthquake activity and there's a bunch on here Overnight if you were to count every single one of these earthquakes. Those are uh, those are uh, They're earthquakes nonetheless, right? There's a good hundred or more and um, it, do it doesn't look like the USGS is reporting a hundred earthquakes on here in fact, uh, they're only showing about 14 earthquakes here in the last 24 hours. But as I showed you guys there, there's a lot more happening there across the area. So keep an eye on that with the, with the rise in inflation and the continued earthquake activity. It's an area to watch pretty closely. Uh, let's see, we're making a zigzag pattern across the map, but... Uh, Let's check out the Earthquake 3D globe, see if there's anything major going on. Alaska's fairly quiet. Uh, Middle America Trench, it looks like we, uh, let's see what's going on down here. Panama area, seen a 5.3 early this morning. Extreme Southern end, I don't even think that's associated here with the Middle America Trench, just the plate boundary down here between um, the, um, technically the Caribbean 
the Cocos plate and the Nazca plate, almost that triple point boundary right here where we're seeing that 5.3 this morning. Um, South America area, 5.3 as well. A few hours earlier, or a few hours later, about 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, let's see. Atlantic Ocean, fairly quiet. Got some movement up in Iceland, so I guess we better go see what's up on this hot Monday. I wish I could say we're going to have some nice weather out here in California, but it's going to be hot again. Only, only supposed to be 107 compared to 114 and 15 like we've seen here last week and over the weekend. 3.5 way up north here along the rift boundary, well north of the mainland Iceland region. Getting a little bit of activity stirring up down here across the uh, Reckness Ridge and the Savart Singi area, but really nothing major. I'm sure this is still inflating. Uh, let's go check out the inflation chart here in the general area of the Grindavik region near the, the Blue Lagoon and the uh, power plant out there. Let's see what we got. There's the eruption that happened uh, there in the May, early June. We lost a lot of magma volume, but now we're coming back up here almost uh, at the level previously seen here. Uh, just prior to the most recent eruption, which of course has come to an end. But uh, as you can see, the ground continues to inflate due to continued supply of magma from the deeper areas below. So I think we got a little ways to go before we see any uh, eruption, imminent eruption, but uh, we're getting up there. Getting back up there. All right, uh, let's see what else we have here. Mediterranean, uh, fairly quiet. Some twos, always common out there. Really nothing major going on for now. Um, yeah, all right, let's see. So there's a 4.5 in there as well. 5.2 and a 4.5. I wonder if there's two earthquakes there. Uh, only one being reported. It's a little odd. Either way, we'll keep an eye on this region, folks. Definitely working its way back here around the eastern side of the Pacific Plate as far as activity goes. So we'll keep an eye on Southern California and up north as well. Let's check out space weather activity. Haven't really seen anything overnight. Didn't look like we saw uh, no more inflares, I should say. Uh, there was inflare yesterday that kicked up here. But uh, mainly sea flare activity here overnight and this morning. Uh, there is a handful of earthquakes coming around the eastern limb, but uh, a little bit better perspective of these today show that they're not quite as complex as what they were last time they were out here. These are, uh, remember those three sunspots that were pretty much in a row? Uh, a couple weeks back here, they were over on the eastern limb, or western limb, excuse me. They've gone the full trip around the far side of the sun and they're coming back around the bend. This is where we seen the uh, the M flare yesterday out here on the eastern limb, but uh, you know there's still a little bit of complexity within these sunspot cores, but not just quite not as dynamic as what they appeared to be last uh, last time they were out here. But again, it's you know kind of still out there on the eastern limb. We'll have to watch this in the coming days, get a little bit better perspective of the complexity of that sunspot sunspots. Still watching this region here, although there's a, a definite split here in the core. I don't know if we're going to see anything strong from this sunspot area, but it does harbor potential for some sea flare activity. Overall threat, X flare around 5%. Don't see it. I think that may be stuck there. Uh, M flare at 40%, C flare around 99% chance or so. And there's really no major roars in the forecast. Little uns unsettled conditions here, it looks like uh, today, but really not calling for much in terms of the auroras. All right, uh, I see it. Well, tropical storm or is it tropical depression now? Barrel. Um, or is it still hurricane? I guess it's still at a hurricane status. Let's double check here. No, it's, it's down. Maximum sustained winds at 60 miles per hour. This was updated Monday, 1 p.m. Central Time, so fairly recent uh, definitely not a hurricane anymore it's well inland got tropical storm warning up here uh, across the Galveston area it looks like 
a lot of a lot of uh, storm surge out there. Seen some of those uh, storm chasers out there streaming all night and early this morning here with a lot of uh, water height storm surge coming right on in, and those guys are right out in the water. A little scary at night, but uh, yeah, I guess they know what they're doing, right? So let's watch this thing spin up here working its way up north and east it's going to continue to dissipate now that it's over land bringing with it though some threats for uh tornado activity i did hear in the jasper area eastern texas of some uh, tornado activity today uh let's see here looks like that tornado threat still extends here across portions of eastern texas louisiana and arkansas in the enhanced zone going to be a 10% chance for some tornado activity associated with this tropical system, which will quickly work its way out of the region here uh, in the coming hours. But uh, it does have a little threat right now for some tornado activity, so just a heads up. Uh, current day outlook for tomorrow, for Tuesday. You can see how quickly that uh, system is going to make its way to the northeast. Slight risk for some severe weather out there, along with some uh, tornado potential as well across the areas of Kentucky, Indiana, and portions of Missouri. And far as um, any further tropical systems, the Eastern Pacific, pretty quiet. Central Pacific, not really expecting any tropical development. And out in the Atlantic, aside from uh, Barrel right now, that's about it. Nothing uh, in the forecast in terms of tropical development. So that's a good sign. It is just getting started, though, right? We are just starting to see uh, these systems fire up. Could still be an active, uh, definitely an active season. All right, what else is there, folks? Any major asteroids? Any doom and gloom headed this way? Let's see what we got for the next close approaches here, uh, which are really not all that close, to be honest. Uh, we do have a 250 foot size asteroid, airplane size, uh, coming underneath the million miles uh, from the planet here. But even so, that's a, uh, a very safe distance. And the rest of these asteroids here are way out there. So normally I won't look into these, do any full detailed studies on them, as far as the orbital path and whatnot goes until we get you know closer. Maybe around 20,000 miles or so. Maybe even under 50,000. But right now, we're uh, we're safe. Everything looks good for now. Seismograph stations out here. Looks pretty quiet. Not seeing any major earthquake activity out there. Enjoy your Monday, folks. Stay cool. Going to be a hot one. I mean, I don't even like to look at our forecast this time of year because it's just hot here in Northern California. It's supposed to be 100 and, oh, 107 and back up to the 114 range i believe tomorrow and wednesday so we're just we're continuing to cook out here ac's running full blast just trying to stay cool and it's oh man i got I'm starting to get to that age where i just want to go somewhere where it's not quite as hot i get it these guys get hot and sultry out here but it's not like consistently two months of a hundred and something degrees and above out here in Nebraska and Kansas. Those guys, at least they get those cold fronts dropping down. Storms popping up and all that good stuff, but here in California, it's just salt, you know, just hot and heat. Nebraska looks pretty nice this time of year. Mid to upper 70s? Oh yeah. Even South Dakota area, look at that. Alright folks, I'm out of here wishful dreaming out here one of these days we'll get out of california just a little bit of uh, a little bit of planning to do have a good one see you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening take care stay safe